big reason why whenever I'm doing like a Fremen showcase, I just chuck him in a Hyper Bloom team. Because the other characters in that team kind of fucking carry while you're on field and Cryo has synergy there. Fridge isn't a worthless interaction. You actually get more blooms per Hydro app because the Hydro will freeze and then bloom and then you'll get more Dendro cores. But it is what it is. You know, it's okay. I pulled Verfuna's sword and got a Harp. Wait, that's actually not bad though. Harp's actually good. Harp is probably the best five-star standard weapon you could get alongside Jade Spear, I think. Hmm, is this true? With Genshin Court, clickbait, shit-talking people. Having Sing So will make it so that when you want to play chill, you can use him over your C6 Yelan. 40% more damage, that's huge, right? Well, it's not bad. This is a good weapon and it is good on him. Just keep in mind that he is not a hyper carry. Hello there, Flip here, and today we are back with another Genshin Court. Just because it's been such a long time, and I know you guys missed Edex Flip. And well, if you were expecting the Zyx Court, assuming you've seen the intro, I'm sorry to say that being in line with the toxic clickbitter I am, I lied. However, instead of trialing the tallest and most intelligent man in the Genshin community, we are going to be trialing the one who feeds him his info, so it's basically the same thing. They both like characters who don't have a single drippy bone in their body. They both hate themselves because they play League. And then... Just pretend there are more similarities. Oh yeah, I guess I didn't specify, the one being trialed today is none other than a repeat offender, the Jeff 77 And for those of you who don't know what the Genshin Court is or what it entails, the TLDR of it is that we'll be trialing certain Genshin content creators based on their takes on characters or the game in general, and give them a fitting sentence accordingly. The first time I courted Jeffrey, I basically gave him the trial equivalent of a kiss on the forehead and a slap on the wrist, so why am I now deciding to do a retrial of the 77? It's mostly due to not only his biases towards not pulling 5 stars being brought to extreme heights, but also due to the fact that he has agendas that he will push about certain units and characters, knowing full well they are false, but in his vigilante efforts to defund Hoyoverse, lying and being intentionally misleading is just one of the steps. Roll the clip. Okay, here's the thing about that, alright? Kogomi is better than Barbara. However, people way underestimate Barbara to this day, and I will gladly lie and say that Barbara is better than Kokomi, just to get people to think about Barbara again. Uh, what? And this isn't the only time he said this. In reality, they're about as good as each other, but I say Sucrose is better because it's clickbait. <laughs> With Genshin Court, clickbait. As said in my previous video, Agenda 77 is heavily against people feeling pressure to pull 5 stars, and because of that he will overanalyze 5 stars flaws and reach for some that don't really exist, while acting like some 4 stars are the best thing to ever exist, because the agenda must be maintained at all costs, and that meshes into the first piece of evidence being the most unprecedented 4 star court watching I've ever witnessed in all my trials. So let's begin. successfully managed to make a unit that you sometimes do want to play over Sing So without making a unit that is better than Sing So. And that's nice. And Farina's not really better than Sing So, but she is better than him in some situations. Just like Yelan is sometimes better than Sing So. I wish the Jeff would just go ahead and point to the scenarios where Jingcho is better than either Yelan or Farina. Because as it stands now, there isn't really a reason to play Jingcho outside of comfort reasons. Unless it's for a team where Nahi does driving, or I guess standard taser teams, as Beidou's defensive utility by itself is kind of troll. If you look at the peak of Vaporize teams, they are all double Hydra teams with Yelan and Farina. And if you want to use an Onomo unit for the grouping, then you still want to up tease Yulan, as she enables more damage over using Jingzhou. And her application by itself is enough to sustain all pyro units including Jangling and Hu Tao as shown in the background footage, and if you were told otherwise, you were lied to. Nuvula and basically any other carry prefer to use Furina for her damage bonus, and Furina teams almost always use healers so his defensive utility isn't as valued. Freeze teams use none of them, or I guess Furina if you're using Charlotte, and the strongest taser teams now are also using Furina. Looking at Dendro teams, Sino and Alhaitham prefer Furina or Yolan for quick bloom setups. So again, where are these teams feigning for Jingcho? Because every relevant Hydra team would most likely want to fit in Yolan or Furina over him as a result in doing more damage, unless it's a team where blooms are the focal point. I mean, technically, since it was a four star, so he should be power crept. That's such a shit way of, of thinking. What him being a four star means is that he is more accessible. 
I disagree with the idea that... In the state we are at in Genshin now, that is just honestly not true. The 4 star pool is so extremely diluted that there's almost a 0% chance that you will just get a random Jinkcho from any banner, and even on banners where he's the rate up you still don't have a guaranteed chance. Unlike limited 5 stars that do have that guarantee. The only time Jinkcho is guaranteed is either in the shop or in the free lantern right picker, and even then you got 3 copies of Jinkcho. Now enjoy getting the rest of the 4 pieces of Exodia because Jinkcho is not a very complete character at low cons. You know his C2 that just allows him to fire off 8 additional rain swords that makes his uptime better for long rotations, and also reduces hydro resistance for a 30% damage increase, and his C6 that only gives him 15 more rain swords, which makes his hydro application so fucking good, and also massively reduces his energy requirements. A 45% damage increase from C5. Okay, well to be fair, in practice he probably aren't getting max Jinchou procs, though it does increase his damage and is relevant for energy, so still. Oh, and don't even get me started on his fucking weapon options because they aren't very accessible either. His two options are Sacrificial or Fravonius, both weapons not given out for free and are also tied to Gacha. Sack Sword also wants you to have high refines at around R3, otherwise you have better chances getting struck by lightning than proking the effect. And even if you do proc the effect, good luck waiting an entire rotation just to proc it again. Now let's compare that to Yolan and Furina who both have great free to play options, Fav in Yolan's case which you get for free, or Floof in Furina's case which again you get for free. And they are quite complete characters once you pull them at C0. And and you're also guaranteed to pull them with enough wishes, so long as the banners come around. Jingcho is a very accessible character if he started in 1.0, but as of now it's harder to guarantee you can make him work compared to other supports or off-field damage dealers, which Poverty C77 doesn't seem to get. Basically, the main reason why he's so good is that he is a character that will consistently be good for every type of account and every type of player, right? This I agree with, despite how much flack I'm giving Jingcho, he's still absolutely one of the strongest units in the game. And even with having the two Hydro Queens, I still use him because I need a team for the other side of the Abyss, and he enables some of my best. So I wonder what Hydro Application 77 has to say about this. If you're a whale, having Singso will make it so that when you want to play just chill, you can use him over Lucy 6 Kilon. I would try and debunk the argument he makes as that's more important than the take, but there is no argument. I, there are also people who don't do that because they didn't see 6 on for her being WoW Omega Pog, they see 6 Yelan because they want to simp for her. And those people won't really play Sing So too much. But even then... What do you mean by even then?! There are two types of people who would use C6 Yelan. As he states, Yelan simps, who would never even want to look in Jingcho's direction. And people who pulled for meta or speedrunning purposes, who again, wouldn't use Jingcho. There is no need to play comfy when the enemy dies before the end of your rotation. Yulon is also a ranged character who has one of the highest HP pools and at C4 buffs your max HP. If anyone needs to play comfy with a C6 Yulon in their team, they should quit the game. Using less skilled players as the crux of your non-argument leads us to takes like Zhongli being the best unit in Genshin. Because of how the Abyss is structured, having more damage is always more important than being more tanky. And a C6 Yulon just offers such an astronomical offensive advantage that there is no situation you'd use the twin over her. Zingzhou is a better defensive utility option than basically every other defensive utility option if you have a healer on your team. And a lot of teams do run healers. Like, Zingzhou offers you a lot more tankiness than Zhongli if you have a healer on your team. A lot more. Well, okay, this one I can sort of understand, as it's true but very skewed. Jingcho with his burst up has damage reduction of 42.3 for fuck me. 42.32 up for his entire burst duration, and this can't be broken. And with a healer, you get all the health back that you would lose, where with a shielder like Zhongli, if the shield breaks, then you just stop mitigating. However, there are some holes. First, you have to look at the enemies that are actually capable of breaking an invested Zhongli shield easily, and then out of those enemies, you'd have to find which of them also wouldn't 
evaporate a character protected by Jing Chou, as healing has intervals and most sustained healing isn't that fast and doesn't last that long. If enemies do a lot of frontloaded damage to you, you can still get easily killed with Jing Chou. If something is going to one-shot you, then you rather have a Zhongli shield, as no matter what health it's at, it will soak up all the damage and then break. Looking at this example I give of Tulpa, Zhongli gives better survivability and resistance to interruption, as the active character is just immune to both of those until the shield breaks. And even after the shield breaks, you are now cutting into the character's HP, where with Jing Chou, by the second attack, all the poison Hu Tao's body vanished into thin air. Another thing is that healing can run out even if Jing Chou's burst is still up, and towards the end of his burst, you have about 2 seconds where you're exposed to damage. Where in Zhong Li's case, his shield cooldown is so short, you can switch back into him to refresh it, which is extremely valuable in Tulpa's case, as you can see by the clips. Also, most healers can perfectly sustain a team by themselves with or without Yan Qing but Blue's help. So yes, there are some times where Jing Chou is better, there are some times where Zhong Li is better. Acting like Jing Chou's defensive utility is always just better than Zhong Li's is just false. But he's got a lot of things going for him, right? He has fast Hydro application, which helps basically any team that wants Hydro. Jing Chou does have the fastest off-field Hydro application, but isn't actually that important. The end goal of all Genshin teams is to do damage, so if more Hydro application doesn't result in doing more damage, it doesn't matter. And most of the best Hydro teams are using double Hydro anyways, where you always have more than enough Hydro application. But let's play this game. Freeze teams don't care about super fast Hydro, Electro Charge teams don't care about super fast Hydro. On Vape teams, you only need enough Hydro to vape all your hits, which Yolan is perfectly capable of doing by herself, even though her application is slower and this results in higher damaging teams. The only teams in Genshin where you're damage is directly tied to how much fast your Hydra application is, are Bloom teams. And if you have to use one Hydra unit with Nahida Driver, that is where Jing Chou is an upgrade. Jing Chou's Hydra application isn't nearly as important as it's made out to be. Like, I still pretty much stand by Sugros National being the best team in the game, and I'll use it everywhere, and it feels so fucking good to play. Is it the best in every situation? Fuck no. If it, is it the best in any situations? Arguably not, but the things that it has going for it make it so that personally I consider it to be the best team across the board. Okay, so Sucrose National is the best team in the game because it's not the best in any situation, nor is it the best in every situation. <laughs> okay. Well, well, that will wrap up this piece of evidence that clearly shows the degrees that Jeff will go to, that he will compare and argue some 4 stars are better than some of the highest ranking C6 5 stars, to push his Jing Chou agenda even further. It's obviously fine to think some characters are better than others, I think Fischl is the best 4 star, some people think that's a horrible take, but when most of your arguments are based on things that don't matter or are inherently non-points, that's when it just becomes a. Eh. Jing Chou has the best Hydra application, but that doesn't actually matter. Jing Chou has great defensive utility, but it's only impactful when stacked with other things. People will use their Zheng Chou over C6 Yulon, but I actually have no way to prove this, so just trust me bro, please. All this on top of the fact that we know Propaganda 77 will lie to push narratives, makes me question how much the Jeff believes this himself. Anyways, for disingenuous advertising, that will net the Jeff 5 years, with an additional 5 years just because that C6 Yulon argument was so atrocious. And enough yippity yap, let's move swiftly onto the next piece of evidence where we actually bring into question his knowledge outside of his vegan-oriented meta. harp on Fischl, and it's not even really better than Stringless anymore. Alright, kicking things off with quite a bold statement, but this is pretty right. okay, no, this is just wrong. Here's a weapon sheet I made, and Fischl with harp pulls ahead by 3% on quicken teams, and the gap just looks awful for Stringless when we take it out of Aggravate. So no, Stringless is never really better than harp for Fischl. It's a fine weapon for basically anyone to get, because it's always gonna be like, one of the alternatives you can go and often slightly above the others but not above by that brother is that not a good thing besides aqua and polar star that basically shot on everything harp is relative to the other strong five stars in terms of power on every bow damage dealer which for a standard weapon you get unconditionally seems pretty good to me in my opinion it should be b it's really only good on bennett and the weapon's value shouldn't only be based on how good it is on one character I disagree with that, because, like, you're not pulling weapons uh, without knowing what character you're gonna put it on, unless you're, like, really new to the game. You, you pull for weapons for the characters, not characters for the weapons. Aquila is a standard weapon. You don't pull for standard weapons. Jadewing Spear can go here. 
The thing about Jade Wing Spear is like, it is a good stat stick, but there's just so few polearm carries that don't use the catch, you know? So it, it gets hurt a lot by the existence of the catch. This would be a fair line of thinking if the catch was actually better than Jade Spear, but for a lot of the polearm damage dealers, that isn't actually true. At the time of this video's release, the polearm damage dealers we have are Sino, Raiden, who has on par cooking skills with Zijia, Rosaria, Hu Tao, Zhao, and Jangling. And out of all these characters, the only place where the catch is better than Jade Spear is for Raiden teams where there are off field damage dealers she needs to battery, or Zhangling. And even then, on Raiden carry teams with Fischl or Sarah, Jade Spear still pulls ahead and is actually relative to Homa, more so than it is to the fishing weapon. And then for Sino and Zhao, these twinks are surprise tools that'll be useful later. The thing about Sino is a lot of his teams have him doing a decent amount of transformative damage, which makes which weapon he's using matter a little bit less because he's doing less talent damage. Yeah, but he still does talent damage. A pretty substantial amount of his damage on most of his teams, whether they add hyper blooms or not, is still talent damage. And Jade Spear is good for that. It's even on par with low refined Ballad of the Fords. Quilla is good for one character, Jade is good for multiple. How does it work? Jade is like not even really best in slot for one character who isn't that great. Aquila is the best in slot for one of the best characters in the game that's played in like a lot of teams. Aquila also arguably isn't Bennett's best weapon. The difference between Aquila and Scoured Blade's buffing capabilities is 2%. And not only that, but Scoured Blade allows you to play solo pirate Bennett teams a lot easier as you'll need to build less ER and substats, especially on teams where you aren't able to funnel Bennett as often or on bosses where you can't get enough enemy particles. Having to do an extra Bennett skill can drastically hurt your DPS and survivability, and the buffing profile is so similar to where if you have the option between Scoured Blade and Aquila, you are generally better off with Scoured unless you need it for someone else. And even compared to forced options, things like Sapput Blade can perform relative to Aquila, with Zhao his only competition is Homa and then nothing else really comes close. Zhao is also a hyper carry, so having a good weapon on him matters more than Bennett, who has so many other alternatives. Free to play alternatives that are just as good. That will wrap up the evidence here and uh, even ignoring the things that are just wrong, it's professional negligence at its finest to go into a tier list with a preconceived bias and be so unwavering to change your mind even though your own chat is disproving you and it's insane because most of the time twitch chats are an echo chamber not as bad as the first piece of evidence but still some very yeah so for professional negligence that'll be an additional three years on top of having to go back and redo or look at weapon sheets especially if you're going to make a tier list on standard weapons. But alas, let's now move on to the last piece of evidence where we will be full on bull charging that vegan meta. Can you do a tier list slash guide on each character's best elemental reaction? None slash many, right? Where like, there's no one team that stands above the rest. I can already tell this tier list is going to be cooked. Amber, none in a bad way. <laughs> Not even three characters in and you've already destroyed the purpose of the tier list, congratulations. That's not my hands clap. I can understand Jean's placement as her role in most teams is literally to just VV on Furina teams. And that goes into ranking what you think the best Furina team is, which doesn't really have a conclusive answer. But in Amber's case, her being good or not doesn't really have a bearing on what her best reaction is at all. And in this case, it would be Melt teams that Amber's most synergistic with. Using Amber's pure charge attacks are kind of meh, but with constellations, primarily C2 and C4, her Baron Bunny explosions can front load quite a bit of damage, and because of her burst, when paired with Chong Yun, you can quad melt his burst and then move on to melting both Baron Bunnies with the aid of another Orfield's cryo applicator and yeah. Is this team meta? Absolutely not. But this line of reasoning would be more in line with what the tier list was meant to do. Fischl. I think Fischl goes pretty comfortably in Quicken as well. She's pretty good. She is also good in Taser, but I would argue that she's actually a lot better in Quicken than in Taser. <laughs> we are going to come back to this. Kaya! Okay, chat. Listen. Okay, listen, hear me out, okay? It's between Freeze and Hyper Fridge, right? But I think that in most situations, he's not really good enough in Freeze teams. Whereas in Hyper Bloom teams, he's actually really good. His high particle generation, relatively short animations, and damage that is actually really good if you kill enemies with a C2. 
He's actually just really good for Hyper Fridge. Yes, the Hyper Bloom teams where Kaya does 3 damage or rotation due to having no buffs and egregious energy needs over any actually competent Hyper Bloom team. Although now that I think about it, Kaya can be pretty good in Oven as well. Oven! Oven! There's more! What's next? Stove? Toaster? Malevolent Kitchen? I oh god. Chat, you guys aren't gonna like me for this. She goes here. She's not in Freeze. She has Freeze, Monocryo, and Hyper Bloom, and she's pretty good in all three. Okay, so the problem with Hyper Fridge is that currently there's no real point to it. The goal of Hyper Fridge teams is to freeze enemies for comfort, and give you more blooms by weakening your Hydro Aura with Cryo, and therefore the Dendro Aura needs more Hydro to be removed and last longer on the enemy. On solo Dendro teams with a Dendro Driver, whether that's Nahida or Baizu, or if you hate yourself a Hytham, there's no point to this as you're already applying so much Dendro to where you're capping out Hyper Bloom procs, so Fridge should be for for slower dendro applicators like DMC or my girl Kole. But the thing is, cry units besides applying cryo kind of do nothing. So while you are getting like what 4 seeds extra while adding in a cry unit that is doing 0 damage, as their energy requirements are going to be through the roof, and they are going to be getting no buffs. What you can do instead that makes more sense is to just use both of the free to play dendro units together. You first get more dendro application which was the problem Fridge was trying to solve. You get more reasonable energy requirements and you also get to have dendro resonance which gives you a free 100 EM. And you can also slot in instructors more comfortably. So offensively there's no real advantage to hyper fridge. The only upside then would be that it freezes enemy which sure can be comfy. But that doesn't justify it being an actual recommendable team on par with Aika's freeze or mono cryo teams. I can Cook, I promise 77 is just way too caught up with the theory behind teams, which skews the judgement of how good those teams actually are. Which reminds me of Sukokamon in which the theory behind it is amazing, but the team isn't particularly that strong because of all the variables outside of your control. So if you asked me about Yai like a week ago, I would have said Quicken. That being said, I did really like the Yai Chevreur's teams. So she might go in none in a good way. I think Chevreur's opened up the her, her team options enough. So this list now no longer gives a single shit about which elemental reactions is best for said character, but now a character having two viable teams means they deserve the spot? <clears throat> So how is Fischl, one of the most flexible characters in the game, that works in a multitude of teams, a multitude of which are viable, still only in Quicken? You can even argue that even though Aggravate is her most synergistic, it's not her best team archetype. Because the strongest taser teams like New Villa or Kokarina, yes I just called New Villa a taser team, fight me, those could be argued as better than most Quicken teams. And the last, that will be it for the final piece of evidence. This was to show how much the Jeff overvalues bloom oriented teams. Or I guess teams that have a lot of theory that go into it. Yes, you can put Kaya and Aika into Bloom teams because of fridge mechanics, but then you are just running less good Hyper Bloom teams. And hell, if you just don't on-field the characters at all, you could get similar results. It's the same way you can slot anyone into National and they may have some synergy there, but it's not really an actual team, it's just the character getting carried by three strong units. This leads to people actually believing things like Hyper Bloom is Eula's best team, when not on-fielding her at all is more damage, so that is barely a Eula team, nor is it something people would pull or build the characters for. So just for the annoyingness of having to hear Hyper Bloom is X's best team, that will be 6 more years for a total of a 19 year sentence under the Fortress of Meripede, and the final punishment will be withdrawal from ever naming teams again, and with that, court is now closed. All in all, despite the trials, the Jeff is still good to listen to, at least compared to other inmates. But some of his criticisms and takes towards units could lead you to not pulling for characters that could be a meaningful upgrade to your account. So you need to be wary of his biases towards those units, especially limited 5 stars. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts onto Jeff as I'd love to hear it and I respond to almost every single comment. Thanks again for watching. And we'll see everyone on the flip side. See ya. Yeah. Bye bye.